Tom Kime is a man of many tastes and flavours. He's a celebrity chef, and having eaten in his restaurant, I can highly recommend it. And in fact, we will be enjoying some of his delectable food during the intermission. Before that, however, Tom's other great passion is fishing sustainably. Ladies and gentlemen, to talk about the future of seafood, please welcome Tom Kime. Hands up, who's been fishing? Fantastic, that's a pretty good show. I love fishing, it's great. I think it's, it's one of the, the best things to do. I want to be wheeled out onto an atoll or a reef into my 90s and carry on fishing. I want to be able to take the fish that I want for lunch and put the rest back so it can swim another day. I've been a committed environmentalist and an avid fisherman since about the age of eight. However, our insatiable appetite for seafood and the way that we are going about destru um, destroying every single aspect of ocean life, I don't think that my, my wish for my old age is going to be very likely. We all have a connection with fish, whether it's with our tuna fish in our lunchbox, our fish and chips that we had on holiday, or a family fish pie. We like fish. Fish is great. Hands up now, who has either heard of or seen the end of the line? This brilliant and shocking film, which was uh, quoted as being the inconvenient truth of the oceans, had a very dramatic effect when it was shown in England. People chained themselves to the gates of the very exclusive restaurant Nobu about the type of tuna that they ordered. Many companies in the food service industry changed their fish buying policy virtually overnight. Could we see the film, please? We are fighting a war against fish. And we are winning. At one level, it's a question of how bad is it? Man is not going to change, and the sea going to be dead. There will be a point in the future where we will run out. What is the tuna that you serve, <laughs> and how is it caught? The difference between this and other problems is that actually it is relatively simple to solve. People say, where are the, all the fish gone? Where are they? We have eaten them. The problems that this film addresses are only going to get worse unless we take immediate action on how we uh, use the ocean and how we um, are depleting it. With, an emerging, um, with emerging economies with, uh, throughout the developing world, there is going to be a huge increase in the amount of middle class people. 300 million in China. That's not to mention India and Brazil. Now, what happens in a middle-class society is that once you have your new house or your new car or your new fridge, you're then going to seek the most affluent commodity that you possibly can, more protein. I'm not telling you not to eat fish. Fish is great. It's the perfect food. It's good for our brain. It's all, all these things. If you didn't eat fish, then you would not be part of the problem. However, you would also not be part of the solution as well. So what is sustainable seafood? Well, it doesn't mean eating farmed fish. Farmed fish is where um, sterile fish are intensively reared in single cages, fed wild fish, and it's not a sustainable way of producing food. To produce one kilo of farmed salmon takes at least five kilos of wild fish 
that has been hoovered out of the ocean, injected with colorings and antibiotics, made into fish meal, and fed to those fish. That is an enormous amount of fish. 40% of the fish that is fished out of the ocean is used for fish meal to either feed fish or other um, animals. Now that is 40%, which is no longer available for the wild fish to eat, and it's also no longer available for human consumption. Now another, um, another common myth is that if it's Australian, then it also must be sustainable. This is also not true. Just because you can catch uh, a shark or a large tuna or a marlin doesn't mean that you should eat them. These huge predators are the lions. They are the, the kind of big cats of the ocean. They need to stay alive in order for the ecosystems to survive. Now, Charles Darwin has a statement where he says that for one species to survive, there have to be many, many species in that ecosystem. So the large predator, such as the huge bluefin tuna or the shark, is as important as the smaller fish. However, there are plenty of um, fishmongers where you could see marlin steaks or large tuna or shark, but it's not called shark because that would be a bit distasteful. It's called flake, very misleadingly, but flake is shark. The alternative to this disastrous... Uh, this, the questions that this film brings up, uh, the answers lie with you. It is vital that we source our fish from sustainable sources. Sustainable seafood is not posh or highbrow. It really does come down to your tuna mayo sandwich or what fish you're going to order in the fish and chip shop. The disappointing thing for this extraordinary island continent is that Australia is many years behind. England, your, uh, parts of Europe, Scandinavia, parts of America. A lot of these countries are going uh, full speed at educating their populace about what sustainability means. They are uh, choosing sustainably sourced seafood. Australia keeps its oceans in a beautiful way. I mean, it keeps it's so, it's so proud of its coastline. It's so proud of its beaches. So why is it? Why do we not care about the fish that we're eating? The last few years has seen a number of huge campaigns in England and Europe, which have been very, very popular. Uh, the uh, fish fight, um, sponsored by um, Hugh Fenley Whittingstall of the famous River Cottage, the Sustainable Fish Cities campaign, which wants to see London as the first sustainable fish city in the world. McDonald's in Europe has committed that their fillet of fish is going to come from sustainably sourced fish in 29 different countries. Across Europe, that is. I have travelled around the world. I was commissioned by the Marine Stewardship Council to write a book documenting their um, stories, um, uh, uh, their fisheries that were going out of their way to be sustainable. I've been to Norway, I've been to Denmark, all of these photographs come from the book that I wrote. I went to the Mekong Delta, I went to a fishery in England, in Hastings, which has been um, around since 1066, before the Norman Conquest. So these um, fisheries are going about, sustainably, about sustainable seafood in lots and lots of different ways. In my travels and conversations with many of these fishermen, I've seen how different ways can, they can be sustainable. There are fisheries that are highly mechanised, where fish is frozen at sea. There are fisheries with thousands of years of heritage, such as the Alaskan salmon fisheries. There are fisheries such as the Coorong in South Australia that, despite extraordinary environmental problems, is very, very important for migrating wading birds. And so they've, a lot of those fisheries have worked with organisations like Greenpeace and the WWF to, to go about being sustainable. At Fish & Co, the Sustainable Seafood Cafe in Annandale, here in Sydney, we um, look to use lots and lots of different species. So things like sardines, mackerel, bonito, uh, leather jacket, 
Kurong yellow eye, sea mullet, these are all fish that have a high biomass, which means there's lots of them, and that means that these fish, they're more plentiful. They've got bigger shoals, they're much more, much more of them. These are the fish that we should be choosing when we go to our fishmonger. We, use, we are one of the few restaurants in Sydney to use albacore tuna. Now, this is a much smaller species of tuna. It gets to maybe 15 or 20 kilos compared to 100 kilos for a, uh, a yellowfin or a bluefin tuna. It takes about three years to get to maturity as opposed to 10 years for some of those big tuna. As a society, we must demand that our fish is sourced from sustainable sources. People power can make a difference. In London, when people reacted to the film of the end of the line, things started to happen. Big companies that had no reason to change their policies suddenly, virtually overnight, decided that they were going to source fish that was fished in a different way, maybe caught pole and line as opposed to netted, different types of tuna. What it comes down to is your tin tuna in your, in your lunchbox. It really is that basic. It is not something which is um, only chefs can do or only people in England can do or anywhere else. It's nothing to do with that. It is about you getting educated. You need to do your homework. For fish sake, you need to do your homework. You need to look after the oceans, not just have a beautiful beach, that's fantastic, but you need to really understand what it is that we're eating. By supporting organisations such as the Marine Stewardship Council, by looking for that eco-label, by voting with your mouth, by going to a fishmonger and say, I'm not going to have that unless it's sustainable. That is something that you can do. Most of all, we have to support the fisheries that are brave enough to choose to be sustainable. We have to choose things like wild uh, Spencer Gulf prawns or some Kurong yellow eye. There are many ways to be sustainable, but what it really comes down to is what are you going to do about it now? It's all very well to watch the film. It's a much braver thing to act. Doing your bit for fish sake has never been more important. One of the fishermen that I met summed it up very, very neatly. He said, if we look after the oceans and the marine environments, then the fish will just do the rest for you for nothing.